This is Talk Radio across the UK, online, on DAB Plus, and on the Talk Radio app. Evenings with Kevin O'Sullivan on Talk Radio. It is now time for our regular slot uh, with the head of the Young Voices UK organisation, Jason Reed. Uh, good evening, Jason. Good evening, Kevin. How are you doing? I'm very, very well. Now, you alerted me to an extraordinary story today uh, that Matt Hancock, uh, formerly health secretary of this parish, uh, who had to step down due to the fact that he was caught with his tongue down his mistress's throat uh, in the heart of the health department while he was health secretary, breaking his own social distancing COVID rules. Uh, he now has written to IPSO, the Press Regulation Authority, uh, demanding that the media stop using pictures of him uh, in that situation, stop using pictures of him kissing his girlfriend uh, and footage of him breaking those rules uh, he's going on about it being something to do with his children i don't think that's what it is i reckon this guy uh we're looking at the pictures now this guy is trying uh, to to whitewash his past uh, not have these uh, embarrassing memories crop up so that he can uh, nurse his delusions that somehow he can revive his devastated career what would be your assessment well, poor old Matt Hancock, he's very keen for us not to be looking at these pictures. And so if you're watching on Talk Radio TV and you've seen those pictures, don't look at them and definitely <laughs> don't screenshot them and share them on social media. That would be really bad if you did that. Poor old Matt would be very upset, so we mustn't do that. Uh, I mean, you're absolutely right. He's very clearly just trying to make us forget what happened so that he can worm his way back into government as quickly as he possibly can, which going by the level of integrity and the reluctance to resign at the top of government, even when things go could go very, very badly wrong and are very embarrassing. Uh, it's, it's not a far-fetched idea that he might actually wake, work his way back into government at some point. And so it's our duty as citizens to uh, make sure that that doesn't happen by continually sharing this photo. Um, and of course, this was triggered, his letter to Ipso was triggered by uh, some newspapers publishing photos of him and uh, and his his new mistress Gina Lola D'Angelo, whatever her name is, on on <laughs> Lola D'Angelo, yeah, Lola Brigida, as everyone kept saying. Uh, but uh, the thing is, you know, this amounts to uh, he's demanding censorship uh, of these pictures and of that uh, video footage, and uh, it's for his own uh, purposes. It's quite clear, uh, but you know, you can't do that. Uh, I'm afraid that those pictures and that footage will always remain news. He was he had one of the great offices of state uh, of this land. He was health secretary and uh, he broke his own rules in the heart of the health department. It was a shocking story and uh, he should be reminded that uh, of that every day. He is trying to whitewash the past. He's trying to censor uh, information that he doesn't like, that he thinks is harmful for his career. I think he really does cherish the delusion somehow that he's going to get back to frontline politics. Uh, he doesn't seem to understand, uh, in my view, I don't know what you think, Jason, but I do think that he crossed so far over the line that his career is all behind him. Well, I would hope so. It's, it's very telling, isn't it, in a situation like this where his first port of call when he sees something he doesn't like is let's write to the regulator, let's crack down on this, let's crack down on the free press and free speech and free expression. He has this authoritarian tendency this tendency for state intervention to solve what he sees as problems in society. And it's no wonder in that context that when he was in government, he was always pushing for harsher COVID restrictions and more lockdowns and all kinds of nanny statism. And there's the incompetence angle as well as the Streisand effect, isn't it? If he hadn't done this, if he hadn't written this le letter to Ipso, you and I probably wouldn't be talking about him. And talk radio TV would not have just broadcast those images all over again. But because he did that, we are now talking about him and now re uh, going over those events again. And so it just goes to show he was not just incompetent as health secretary. Matt Hancock is just incompetent, full stop. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, this letter to Ipso uh, which has been leaked to the excellent website Guido Fawkes, which deals in uh, uh, brilliant uh, political exposés and revelations, uh, gets some great stories. Uh, now, this letter that Matt sent to Ipso, 
Uh, we don't know what happened, but my imagination uh, reads it that someone at Ipso thought, well, what's the thing he's doing here? So uh, shall we say it was passed on. So Guido Fawkes has published it. Uh, and guess what? We now know the whole story. So what I would suggest is uh, this shows uh, on the part of the former health secretary a tremendous lack of foresight and judgment. Yeah, he's got no idea what he's doing. When you get to, when you get to the point where even the press regulator you're complaining to is so uh, appalled and finds it so ridiculous what you're trying to do that they're willing to leak it to Guido. Well, Fox we, yeah, we better know. be careful though because we don't actually know what happened. Uh, but that would be my assumption. Someone has seen this letter. We don't know who, but it's certainly been leaked. But we don't know it's Ipso, so we have to be slightly careful there. But but the point is, he put that letter into the ether. And that was a that showed a lack of judgment, lack of understanding for the way life is, to be honest with you. It does. He's so certain that he's in the right. He's so certain that he's the victim of some grand conspiracy. And so because the world is just, there's, it's only a matter of time before the victim, the him on the receiving end, he, he ascends again and is able to resume his rightful place as nanny in chief. Uh, and of course, it's, that's looking less and less likely by the day, but it's still a, a very distinct possibility. If this is how you react to having a photo uh, taken of you on holiday and published in the newspapers, that's part of the course. Politicians have holiday photos published all the time. So there are countless examples. Boris was lambasted for his holiday very recently. If you're a, a Love Island contestant and you, you go to a beach, you can pretty much guarantee there'll be a, a hack in the bushes somewhere taking a photo. It's, it's entirely normal. Of course, it's in the public interest. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget about his constituents in West Suffolk. Just because he's not a cabinet minister anymore, that doesn't mean that what he does is no longer in the public interest. It very much is in the public interest because he's still a member of parliament and still a conservative member of parliament. Yes, he's citing in this letter to Ipso, you know, the privacy of his children, his former wife or his estranged wife. Uh, and uh, for that, I have the utmost sympathy. Absolutely fair point. Uh, we shouldn't... Uh, uh, punish the kids uh, for the sins of the father, as it were. Uh, but he's also complaining, as you rightly say, Jason, uh, that uh, he, sa he, sa he says it's of no news, public interest anymore uh, for uh, for the public to see pictures of uh, Gina Colodangelo and my and him. Uh, you know, I'm afraid, uh, Matt, that's not true. Uh, they uh, he's turned himself into a figure of great interest for the public and uh, as a former uh, Secretary of State for Health who broke his own rules uh, with this mistress of his as she was then uh, I'm afraid when they are seen out uh, in public uh, the photographers have a right to take their picture and they damn well will and the newspapers will publish them uh, that's called news sense that's called journalism and once again this little man has no right to tell us what the public are interested in Exactly. Yeah, he was in a public place. He's got no leg to stand on at all here, and it's just made. Uh, it goes from ridiculous to uh, to appalling when you when you bear in mind the fact that, as you say, he broke his own rules. He imposed lockdown on us, and we had people being arrested for for sitting on park benches drinking coffee or for walking in the countryside with friends. And meanwhile, he's there um, becoming very intimate with someone who was definitely not part of his household uh, inside a building at the height of lockdown. It's completely unacceptable what's happened, and it's entirely right that we're talking about it and reporting on it, um, because if he wants to get back into government, it would have to be on, on merit, and that doesn't look very likely. He, yeah, wants, well, he wants a free pass. He'll never, get, he'll never get him back for that reason. Uh, but uh, with this letter, he scored a spectacular own goal, uh, because here we are talking about it, and we, we won't be the only ones. Uh, before you go, Jason, just to, to change the attack for just a second, uh, it's the budget tomorrow. Uh, what are your... Uh, I mean... Basically, I have lots of fears about it, that it's going to be spend, spend, spend. Corporation tax is going to go up. Our tax is going to go up. Uh, and once again, this government will prove it's not really conservative. Uh, do you have similar fears? I do have similar fears. I, I, I've said it before on your programme, Kevin, and I'm, I'm becoming very pessimistic with this government. I don't think there's any hope of any uh, return to free market sensibility, low taxes, that kind of thing. Rishi Sunak seems to be fully signed up to the Boris Johnson playbook. And of course, he's got number 10 very much in his sights as well. So he's going to be doing his master's bidding 
Um, I think some tax rises are very much not out of the question, even though the national insurance rise was very, very recent and didn't have any, uh, there wasn't any logic behind that one. There won't be any logic behind the ones that come out in the budget either. Well, corporation tax rise is almost a certainty and that could cause yeah. all sorts of problems in the business community. But to store up uh, your reaction to tomorrow's event and perhaps we'll get you on uh, before uh, this time next week to find out what you think. Always a pleasure to talk, uh, Jason. Thank you so much. Jason Reed, head of Young Voices UK there. Uh,